Thank you to be here for the presentation of the new Club Swan 36, the new one design of Swan. Please follow the presentation on the screen outside, on the screen inside. I hope that you enjoy. I would like to introduce Leonardo Ferragamo, president of Natural Swan. Thank you. Good evening. I have to say it's uh, really wonderful to be here and I feel very honored uh, in having so many, uh, so many close friends, so many passionate sailors around us. And I would like, uh, first of all, to remember uh, a person that was very much at heart with many of us, uh, Vincenzo Zaccagnino. Vincenzo was a dear friend, one of the greatest journalists uh, Yochtin has seen in the last uh, several decades. And he left us a few days ago, so our thoughts are with him first than everything else. And, a special thank to the Société Nautique de uh, Saint-Tropez and to BMW for uh, organizing this uh, lovely way, this very informal but nice way of uh, presenting uh, something we have very much at heart, uh, the Club Swan 36. Uh, as uh, you may know, uh, Club Swan yachts uh, have uh, been recently established and they want to be for Nautor Swan uh, the forefront uh, in uh, performance, in uh, innovation, in design and uh, going alongside with the Swan yachts uh, it takes uh, the DNA and the value that are behind uh, Nautor Swan. It is about elegance, it is about uh, um, performance, and furthermore, it's about reliability. And everything in uh, Nautor Swan is done with passion and with pride. The pride that has uh, created a culture in the company as to always be uh, in the uh, in forward looking and uh, always have the ambition of doing things better than anybody else. At least we try. The um, first uh, Club Swan was launched here um, two and a half years ago in the same venue. And uh, we presented the, the 50 with a lot of expectation uh, and some hesitation because it was uh, very much a challenge to bring, boat, uh, bring out a boat that was so different from anything else Swan had done. But we had trust uh, in what we were able to express uh, and I think uh, the result paid. Uh, we have more than, well more than 20 boats uh, between uh, sailing and in production nowadays and this has allowed us to create uh, uh, a special project for uh, the Swan One Design, uh, the Nation Trophy, I'm sure you're all aware of, is, uh, a, wants to be an important point of reference in sailing in the world. It is uh, innovative in the sense that it brings back uh, to sailing something that had been forgotten, which is the confrontation between different countries in uh, the water when, um, when challenging each other. And so the first edition in uh, Palma was uh, a real nice success, uh, very rewarding, that pushed us to create uh, the Nations League uh, in the various regions. The, the Mediterranean were part of uh, in this uh, event. Uh, the North European is also established. And we're aiming to have them in, uh, in Asia and in uh, the USA as we prepare for the Nation Trophy itself, which is going to be in Palma, October 2019. So why the Club Swan 36? We had the question ourselves. The easy answer was because it was uh, the first one ever built, was, which was also a 36. It was Tarantella. And Tarantella did open a new area in uh, the sailing world uh, with its innovation, with its... Uh, values that it brought to the sailing world, well, that was one of the reasons. But I have to say that um, um, thinking of uh, a project, which you will see very shortly, which is uh, as exciting and, uh, uh, I would say, breathtaking as you can ever, uh, could not imagine, 
we thought of uh, really, can we have some attention over there, please? We, we really wanted to bring to the sailing world uh, a, um, a boat that is uh, um, of a dimension that can allow many new sailors, sailors from the new uh, dimension that are looking for performance, for, they're looking for excitement, and they're looking for uh, easy sailing, but also uh, a gentleman kind of competition to come and join uh, the organization that we have built uh, around uh, Nautor Swan. Uh, uh, the Nation Trophy, the Swan uh, One Design Organization, and everything else that we try to do to create uh, excitement and enjoyment for the yachts that we so proudly built. The other, the other reason why we decided for the Club Swan 36 uh, is because when we briefed uh, 1K to do something really exciting, and he came up with this project, uh, I tell you, it was impossible to resist, to take it and to launch it. So thank you, one. Thank you, everybody. I would like to uh, invite one to, um, to unveil the new project, uh, the Clubs 136, with me. And then I will leave him the microphone. The floor is mine. Well, thank you, Leonardo. Thank you very much for the opportunity of designing boats like this. Uh, it's not uh, very often that we have this chance. Thank you very much, and thank you everybody for coming. Um, it's very. I can see some uh, friendly faces amongst the crowd, and uh, I'm very excited about this moment. As Leonardo said, two and a half years ago. We were in this place launching the uh, Clubs on 50. Uh, since then, it's been uh, quite a ride and a very nice success. We have uh, learned how to work together. We have uh, learned our ways. And uh, we have now, two and a half years later, I think ready to, to take it to the next level. We are ready to, um, to, uh, to push it to the new uh, boundaries. Now, Torswan has always been at the forefront of technology since the very beginning, and I think it's a, it's a very good uh, combination, it's a very good um, uh, yard that we um, to, to um, uh, partner with to pr uh, produce a boat like this. I think that the um, world of sailing is actually going through a very interesting um, transition right now, uh, from the America's Cup on the one end uh, to the Olympics on the other extreme, and through the Volvo Ocean Race, the, we are discovering new, new ways of going sailing, and, uh, and uh, I think that uh, this project actually sits in a very interesting um, range and aspect of that uh, very wide uh, ways of sailing. Um, it's, a, it's a boat that combines innovation and technology uh, to achieve accelerating and uh, very uh, high performance, but yet do it in an accessible way, in a way that... Um, uh, good sailors, but um, uh, amateur sailors could actually uh, have a grasp and uh, achieve these performances in all safety. I think that this was very important for us to, uh, to uh, underline around this project. I can hear a lot of noise in the back. <laughs> Maybe you guys in the back can uh, listen. I promise you it's worth the listen. Thank you. So we will go through a few um, slides here that uh, will describe the boat, and I will be talking about it. Um, so this boat, as I was saying, is a, is a very lightweight uh, boat, and uh, as such, it produces, um, or it opens the door for a sailing, a type of sailing which is foil-assisted. This doesn't mean that the boat uh, would be foiling in a way as uh, flying. There is a distinctive distinction between foiling and flying. 
uh, this boat will be producing a lot of vertical force, not all the way to flying, but keeping the boat under control into a situation that we call skimming. Um, it is a very po powerful boat, as you can see. Um, the maybe, maybe somebody can... Uh, <laughs> I am sure the wine is really good, but this project is actually better. Maybe you can... Thank you. So, um, as you can see, it's a very powerful boat um, and uh, combining a fairly uh, big draft to, make, to keep the boat light. Um, it's a, there's a, a very uh, deep fin, uh, three, um, almost three meters, dual rudders as usual. And then we have uh, bring this, what I believe is a very innovative and interesting concept, which is the one of the curved foil. This is a foil which is actually, in order to keep it simple, in order not to take it to the level of the flying, which basically is very exciting, but is, it takes a, a very demanding crew and, uh, to, uh, to control it, and to a certain extent is actually not that safe. Um, we, we came out with this idea of a foil, which is a curved foil that would sort of go and rotate, as you will see later, all the way across the boat and can be used in, in both tacks. Maybe uh, we can keep going with the slides and I will show you this. Um, it is a full racing boat. As you can see, the uh, deck layout is purely racing. There is very much limited interiors. The interiors have some accommodations, but purely as a refuge type of accommodations, not as a connected or wired style of accommodations, uh, to the point of uh, having a, even a retrieving line for the uh, spinnaker, which makes the racing very exciting. Um, we are aiming at uh, having a boat at 2.5 tons displacement, which is uh, very light and uh, the, uh, for a length of 11 meters and uh, a draft, like I was saying, of 2.75. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> the, we, have teamed up, we have teamed up with uh, Pure Design and Engineering, which is um, a company, a very well-known established company in the design uh, of uh, structures led by Giovanni Belgrano, whom uh, we are uh, developing a very nice relationship. And uh, we, um, we have made a, a very, what, what I believe is a very light boat, as you could see, what 2.5 tons. Yet it's uh, CE approved, so it, it goes through all the norms uh, and is a standard built boat. Now into the rig, and this is the, this is the part that I believe is, is, um, is very important. As you all know here, uh, yachting, sailing, is about transforming energy uh, from the wind into, uh, uh, into a propulsion. The way this is done is by a combination of... The way this is done is by combining the aerodynamic aero forces together with the hydrodynamic uh, forces and moments that counteract that. This equilibrium is done uh, under a wide range of uh, power requirement. Uh, on the uh, on the light wind uh, speeds, when you need the power, um, you need not only a lot of sail area, but you also need to control this sail area. This is why we have created this very versatile rig, which um, uh, allows to power up the boat when it's needed, but at the same time to depower it and control it uh, when you don't need it. Um, I think you have to see this boat more as a big dinghy rather than a small, um, typical uh, boat. Um, the spinnaker is actually very uh, big and powerful as well, which, would, which will um, pr uh, promote very exciting uh, downwind racing because together with the foil, as you will see in a minute, will lift the boat out of the boat water into a skimming situation, which I believe is a very uh, interesting way of sailing because it doesn't go all the way to the flying like many other classes today, but it, it, it keeps the sailing safe and fun without having to uh, get to a level of expertise that is required in the, in the, in the flying of catamarans and things like that. Can we uh, go to the next slide, Pietro, please? Okay, so the main is 56 square meters, uh, the jeep is 34, and the spinnaker is 103 square meters. The spinnaker would have a retrieving line all the way inside the boat, uh, like I said, and that would promote very exciting racing. There is a very interesting feature here, which is the... Um, you can see it's only one single set of spreaders with a um, retrieving here for the, um, for the runners. 
but this is done, this is combined with a very versatile mast. This whole thing works together. It's quite complex to uh, explain here, but um, it would allow the, 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 the sail plan to go through a very wide set of ranges without having to change jibs and, and change mainsails and all that. There is one reef uh, uh, for the very high end of the over 20 knots type of sailing, but most of the racing that we all do uh, is going to be with a full main and one single jib. The deck layout, as I told you, is seven winches, so the three symmetrical on each side, and then there's one pit that is also used for the retrieving. Um, and then there's a very interesting feature of how we attach the forestay into a loop ins inside the feature for the retractable bowsprit. Um, all this is, uh, there's nothing super innovative in, in, in all these different features. It's the combination of all of them, which actually, I think, put the boat into a category of its own. Here is what I wanted to tell you about the foil. So as you can see, it's a curved foil. Now, when the foil is completely deployed, it's uh, all the way out here. And then it, it sort of swings from one side to the other one. So you can actually use it downwind with the, uh, with the uh, tip on the uh, outside. And then upwind, it's an asymmetrical foil that goes all the way down and actually produces vertical force as well. Um, in the higher end, uh, in the above, above uh, 14 knots or so, then uh, you can choose to use this foil all the way down and sail down with hotter angles and faster, or you can choose to have these type of features which would be easy to jive and then have lower, sort of more VMG friendly angles. Um, the interesting part, if you go back one second, uh, Pietro, thank you. The interesting part of this um, is that when you sail with asymmetric foils, um, it, even up when it drives the boat into a, a negative leeway situation, which means that the boat actually goes higher than what is pointing, uh, which brings the, uh, the experience of sailing upwind particularly very, very interesting. And it's very efficient because in, in going into negative leeway, the uh, efficiency of the rig is increased uh, quite significantly. Here we have prepared some uh, renders and photos for you of how we expect the boat sailing. Uh, again, see for yourself, but it's a very powerful here you can see when he removes the water, uh, the uh, position of the foils. This is a, a shot from underwater, and this is how the upwind condition will look like. <coughs> the, uh, yeah, the upwind sailing would be about 21 degrees of heel, and downwind would be anything between 15 and... 15 and um, 21 degrees. Very well. I hope you like it. I uh, would like to thank you very much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. And um, I will um, thank you. I will now, now like to introduce Philippe Poulen, whom is a, not only a dear friend, but also he'll take care of the uh, project management and the project leadership on this, uh, on this campaign, which is very technologically driven and uh, very advanced, so we need his help. And uh, so, Philippe, please explain to us about the class and the boat and everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. Uh, maybe Juan forgot to say something. In fact, he says that if everything goes well, it's because of him. If it's going bad, it's because of me. <laughs> so now I need to explain how we're going to do that. Of course, the first thing to say is we're making a prototype. And the prototype is almost ready to be... Uh, Juan is finishing the list latest touch on the design to make sure we have a prototype at the end of the year. And only after a full month of testing, we will launch the full production. So that's very important to understand. And we call it the boat zero. We don't want this boat to become any time uh, one design. We can drill, push, change, and test everything. Not the whole, not the, because at the office, the GYD, they're doing a lot of uh, CFD to make sure the appendages and all the fluids around and the rig going to be okay, but you can imagine there is a lot of systems, and especially for the daggerboard. This daggerboard tack upwind, it, just to give you a number, I'm not going to give you too much number, but it's a, it's a moving, it's a rotation of 1.9 meters. So either if you're able to tack quickly and to be able to switch the board from one side to the other quick before it gets loaded, you're okay. So it's fast is one key. Uh, but at the end, if you're not finishing the full rotation, there will be already pressure on the, on the, on the board, and then you will be powered. So this kind of thing will be tested uh, in uh, December and January next year before we launch the full production. 
Uh, same thing for the rig. And we also uh, decide to test uh, electric e-propulsion and needs also some testing. A very interesting idea was to have a retractable propeller to make sure when the boat is sailing doesn't have any drag, uh, we can design a propeller uh, blade, five blade propeller to be very efficient. These are all the things and features we're going to test with a prototype uh, at the launch, which is going to be at the end of the year. The goal, very important for next year. Yeah, the, the goal at the end, thank you. Uh, at the end of the next year, it's to have 20 boats on the water, and we need to have the TNT team up with the 50, with the 44, 42 and 45, which I need to talk a, a little about. Uh, so the boat will be delivered between spring and the fall for the next nation trophy, like Leonardo explained. And uh, that's it. For the very important part that I should mention, uh, Juan explained and Leonardo explained about the boat, which is the interest today. But uh, we listened a lot about during the Nation Trophy. And in fact, I would like to mention Ettore Matiello, uh, Corso Quilsi, which is over there, and all the team from the Na for the Notor Club Swan organization. We took over the uh, running of the class of the 42, the 45, the 50, of course, and now the 36. This is a very important part of it because the 36 will be using the same structures. Uh, we have a chief measurer that you, I guess a lot of you knows very well. His name is Andrew Yates. So he's gonna be responsible for the one design rules. He's already the chief measurer for the Clubs 150. He's involved with the J class and he will be the chief measurer for the Clubs 136. And we have also another very important part which is running the part on the water. It's not only the social, it's the professional uh, race committee run by Ariane Meymar. Uh, which is also, we believe, very important to be able to run a regatta at the best level on the water. So where are we? So, so I think we covered everything. I would like to say, uh, yes, for the rules, uh, I had already many questions about what will be the granted of the one design rule. So it's, of course, it's a strict one design. That means you, not, you don't touch in anything if you're not uh, allowed to. So weight, of course, CG, all that, we're doing our job to making sure Go back a little, Pietro. Uh, so, on a driver rule, that's part of the DNA of Notor. It's a pro-am boat, which is a, a six boat, six crew on a boat, so 50-50, a maximum three professional and three amateurs, and the owner is driving. And if you want to have a relief uh, a driver, it has to be an amateur and not a professional. And as I explained, the dedicated uh, Swan uh, Club Swan organization. So that's an idea about how you can, uh, anyway, you do whatever you want with the crew, but that can be an idea about the, uh, uh, the job on the boat. Uh, there will be a maximum weight also of 510 kilos. Some renders again. And I would like to say, yes, very important uh, for the testing and the development of the CE propulsion, which is a real challenge for all of us. We partner with BMW and Torquedo for complete systems which not only talking about the battery, we're not only talking about the motor, we're talking about the full system from the propeller to the battery or from the battery to the propeller. It depends how you see that. But we're going to test it also uh, on the prototype and making sure there can be a good solution. So I would like to thank a lot BMW and Torquedo for their help. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I would like to mention uh, Pietro, Corso, we are all here to answer any of your questions. Thank you for coming.